श्रीमती भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी जगत गुरु शिला प्रभुपात की जय इस कौन फाउंडर आचार्य जगत गुरु शिला प्रभुपात की प्रेम से बोलो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदादा शिवशादि गौर भक्त वृंद की जय ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री श्री गुरु एंड गौरंग सो रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो टू चैप्टर सेवन टेक्स्ट नंबर फिफ्टीन अंता सरासी उर बालेन पद गृहित ग्राहेन युक्त पतिर अंबुजास्त अर्थ आहेदम आदिपुर साखिल लोकनाथ तीर्थाश्रवा श्रवना मंगला नमोदय आंता सरासी उर बालेन पाद गृहत ग्राहेन युक्त पतिर अंबुजास्त अर्थ आहेदम आदिपुर साखिल लोकनाथ तीर्था श्रवा श्रवना मंगला नाम देया आंता सरासी उर बालेन पाद गृहत ग्राहेन युक्त पतिर अंबुजास्त अर्थ आहेदम आदिपुर साखिल लोकनाथ तीर्थाश्रवा श्रवना मंगला नाम देय प्लीज रिसाइट युक्त अंत तीर्ता शवा शवना मंगल आंता सारा तो नयुक्त पति अंबुजास्त अर्थ आहे रमादि पुरसा के लोकनाथा तीर्ता शवा शवना मंगल नाम देया आंता साहसी उर्बाल पाद गृह तो ग्राहे न युक्त पति तीर्ता शवा शवना मंगल माता जी आंता सरा सहृदा गृहित पुरुषा के लोकनाथ तीर्ता शवा शवना मंगल नाम देय
अंता सारा से बल करी तो हे न युक्त पत्य अंबुज हस्ता अर्थ आहे दमारोकनाता तेता शवा शवना मंगलाना आंता सरा से उड़ बालेन पाद गृह तो ग्राएन युक्त पतिरांबुजास्ता अर्था आहे दम आदि पुरसा के ललोकनाता तीर्ता शवा शवनाम वट वर्ड मीनिंग अंता सरा सी विद इन द रिवर उरुबालेना बाई सुपीरियर स्ट्रेंथ पदे लेग गृहिता बीन टेकन अप ग्राहेना बाय द क्रॉकोडाइल युतापति ऑफ द लीडर ऑफ द एलिफेंट्स अंबुजा हस्ता विद अ लोटस फ्लावर इन द हैंड अर्था ग्रेटली अग्रीव्ड आहा अड्रेस्ड इदम लाइक दिस आदि पुरुषा दे ओरिजिनल इंजॉयर अखिल लोकनाथ द लॉर्ड ऑफ द यूनिवर्स तीर्थश्रवा अस फेमस अस अ प्लेस ऑफ पिलग्रमज श्रवण मंगला ऑल गुड सिंपली बाय हियर इन द नेम नाम whose holy name is worth chanting translation purport by his by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami jagat guru shila prabhupad ki yeah. translation the leader of the elephants whose leg was attacked in a river by a crocodile of superior strength was much aggrieved taking a lotus flower in his trunk he addressed the lord saying o original enjoyer lord of the universe o deliverer as famous as a place of pilgrimage all are purified simply by hearing your holy name which is worthy to be chanted purport the history of delivering the leader of the elephants whose leg was attacked in the river by the superior strength of a crocodile is described in the 8th canto of shrimad bhagavatam since the lord is absolute knowledge there is no difference between his holy name and the personality of god the leader of the elephants was much distressed when he was attacked by the crocodile Although the elephant is always stronger than the crocodile the latter is stronger than the elephant when it is in the water and because the elephant was a great devotee of the lord in his previous birth he was able to chant the holy name of the lord by dint of his past good deeds every living entity is always distressed in this material world because this place is such that at at, at that at every step one has to meet with some kind of distress but one who is supported by his past good deeds engages himself in the devotional service of the lord as confirmed in the bhagavad gita 716 those who are supported by impious acts cannot be engaged in the devotional service of the lord even though they are distressed this is also confirmed in the bhagavad gita 715 the personality of god had hari appeared at once on the back of his eternal bear garuda and delivered the elephant The elephant was conscious of his relation with the supreme lord he addressed the lord as adi purusha or the original enjoyer both the lord and the living beings are conscious and are therefore enjoyers but the lord is the original enjoyer because he is the creator of everything in a family both the father and his sons are undoubtedly enjoyers but the father is the original enjoyer and the sons are subsequent enjoyers A pure devotee knows well that everything in the universe is the property of the Lord and that a living entity can enjoy a, a thing as ordained by the Lord. A living being cannot even touch a thing which is not allotted to him. 
This idea of the original enjoyer is explained very nicely in the Ishopanishad. One who knows this difference between the Lord and himself never accepts anything without first offering it to the Lord. The elephant addressed the Lord as Akila Lo Kanata, or the Lord of the universe, who is therefore the Lord of the elephant also. The elephant, being a pure devotee of the Lord, specifically deserved to be saved from the attack of the crocodile. And because it is a promise of the Lord and his devotee, that, that his devotee will never be vanquished, it was quite befitting that the elephant called upon the Lord to protect him. And the merciful Lord also at once responded, The Lord is the protector of everyone, but he is the first protector of one who acknowledges the superiority of the Lord instead of being so falsely proud as to deny the superiority of the Lord or to claim to be equal to him. He is ever superior. A pure devotee of the Lord knows this difference between the Lord and himself. Therefore, a pure devotee is given first preference because of his full dependence. Whereas the person who denies the existence of the Lord and declares himself the Lord is called Asura. And as such, he is given protection by the strength of limited power subject to the sanction of the Lord. Since the Lord is superior to everyone, his perfection is also superior. No one can imagine it. The elephant addressed the Lord as Tirtha Shrava or as famous as a place of pilgrimage. People go to places of pilgrimage in order to be delivered from the reactions of unknown sinful acts. But one can be freed from all sinful reactions simply by remembering his holy name. The Lord is therefore as good as the holy places of pilgrimage. One can be free from all sinful reactions after reaching a place of pilgrimage. But one can have but one can have the same benefit at home or at any place simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord. For a pure devotee, there is no need to go to the holy place of pilgrimage. He can be delivered from all sinful acts simply by remembering the Lord in earnestness. A pure devotee of the Lord never commits any sinful acts. But because the whole world is full of the sinful atmosphere, even a pure devotee may commit a sin unconsciously as a matter of course. One who commits sinful acts consciously cannot be worthy of being a devotee of the Lord. But a pure devotee who unconsciously does something sinful is certainly delivered by the Lord because a pure devotee remembers the Lord always. The Lord's holy name is called Shavan Mangala. This means that one who receives everything auspicious simply by hearing the holy name. In another place in Srimad Bhagavatam, his holy name is described as Punya Shavana Kirtana. It is a pious act simply to chant and hear all about the Lord. The Lord descends on this earth and acts like others in connection with the activities of the world just to create subject matters for hearing about him. Otherwise, the Lord has nothing to do in this world, nor has he any obligation to do anything. He comes out of his own causeless mercy and acts as he desires. The Vedas and Puranas are full of descriptions of his different activities so that people in general may naturally be eager to hear and read something about his activities. Generally, however, the modern fictions and novels of the world occupy a greater part of people's valuable time. Such literatures cannot do good to anyone. On the contrary, they agitate the young mind unnecessarily and increase the modes of passion and ignorance, leading to increasing bondage to the material conditions. The same aptitude for hearing and reading is better utilized in hearing and reading of the Lord's activities. This will give one all around benefit. It is concluded therefore that the holy name of the Lord and topics in relation with him are always worth hearing. And therefore he is called here in this verse Namadeya or one whose holy name is worth chanting. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutani Shumati Gopal Krishna Goswami Tinamine Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastatada Satarine Oma Gyanam Timirandasya Gyanam Jana Salakya Chakshunun Militam Yena Tasmai Shirui Rue Namaha I was born the darkest ignorance and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Krishna Swa Dhamo Bhakate Dharma Jnana Jnana Dabi Saha Kalo Nashta Dusham Esha Punarko Ano Dano Dita. This Bhagavad Puran is as brilliant as the sun, and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna 
to his own abode, accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc., persons who have lost their <coughs> vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in the age of Kali, will get light or shall get light from this Bhagavad Purana. So, <clears throat> so it's, it's, it's a long purport. Srila Prabhupada has a lot of points in, in the purport. Uh, one of the most important things that I wanted to touch on is that this chapter, as we know, is entitled Scheduled Incarnations. And to common people or to ordinary people, this, this may seem as mythology. You know, when we speak about Hiranya Kashipu, half man, half lion, incarnation, or when we speak about Matsya Avatar, or when we speak about Kurma Avatar, for them this is mythology. But Srila Prabhupada says in his reasoning that do we want to follow the imagination of these so-called scientists, philosophers, or do we want to accept it as mythology which is based on Shastra? So that's a very important point. It's an important point because Srila Prabhupada is giving us a very important understanding that people may look at us as followers of mythology, especially scientists. However, they are also imagining things. So here is imagination of a human being who is limited and here is mythology which is supported by Shastra. So at least we have something to back up. Correct or wrong? We have something to back up. We have the Shastra to back up. They have their imagination to back up. So very important that when we read these types of chapters, especially in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Purana, that's why it's called Bhagavad Purana, we at least have a very clear understanding as devotees. That one, one is imagination, one may be regarded as mythology. But we know as, pure, as, as devotees that this is the truth. This is the knowledge. Why? Because it is, it is supported not only by Shastra, but it is also supported by Guru and Sadhu. These three are supporting this notion and the previous Acharyas have also accepted it. So this was very important when I was listening to Srila Prabhupada about Srila Prabhupada speaking about imagination and mythology. Then, another very important point that Srila Prabhupada points out is our luck or poor fund of knowledge. When something happens, we say, oh, it happened, I did it because of intuition. I don't know if you have heard of this. You know, a lot of people say, I did an action because I, I had intuition. But Srila Prabhupada in his lecture says, it's not intuition, it's the Paramatma in you speaking. It's the Paramatma doing that action. So you can see how a devotee's perspective of everything is as compared to a materialist. Because they are not aware they are in Agyan. That it is not just intuition. It is actually the, the Paramatma in, within us guiding us. And that's why whenever a devotee goes out. I was just on Saturday at the flower beds in Carlsbad. Because some devotees had gone there. And so I went to see you know, how the flowers look like. But we know that when we're looking at the flowers in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that I'm also the fragrance of these flowers. So whatever a devotee sees is in perspective and in relation to the Supreme Lord. So this is the difference in consciousness. This is the difference in, in us sitting here and someone outside. So very important. These were two very important points I got from Srila Prabhupada. In his purpose, in Bhagavad Gita 7.15, as we saw today, Srila Prabhupada in the purport mentions 7.15, 7.16. Srila Prabhupada refused that so-called scientists, philosophers, educators. And the reason he refutes them is because Srila Prabhupada says they have a motive of material gain. And because they have a motive for material gain, they do not accept the plan or path of the Supreme Lord. So, this is also a very important point that why we are not accepting what the scientists and philosophers believe in is because they do not accept the, as we, as we read today, 
in the purport also they do not accept the supreme position of the of the lord however we also have personalities in shastra on the contrary to the so called scientists and philosophers who actually in the bhagavad gita are mentioned who we accept as authorities because they accept the supreme lord and in the bhagavad gita we know we have brahma shiva kapila the four kumaras manu vyas devala asita janaka pralad and bali so we accept them why because even shri chaitanya mahaprabhu why because they are faithful philosophers politicians and scientists who have surrendered to the lotus feet of the supreme person the word here is surrender there is some surrender and they have accepted we also learn this in our shastras and by example in the lives of the pandavas if if we see in the life of the pandavas we had nakul who was regarded as the most handsome or beautiful personality you imagine today someone is person a person is very beautiful or has those features they'll be on vog magazine they'll be on everywhere they'll have a lot of pride we had beam who was the strongest you know it's very interesting how material world feels that in the current world we are we are we are progressing in the spiritual times we used to take strength according to elephant strength now this is horse power <laughs> so you just imagine this is another imagination is horse more stronger or elephant more stronger so we used to compare according to elephant power so we used to say beam has the strength of 10000 elephants today we say a car has 360 brake horse power horse power not elephant power now he was the strongest person he <laughs> so just look at our material advancement we are comparing with horse power and we think we are advancing but in reality here was the strongest person here was the beautiful person here we had uh, arjun the greatest archer imagining looking at a pond of water that is moving and shooting an arrow into the eye of a fish you know that that requires a lot of skill yet all these great personalities had one thing that they taught us that they attributed their qualities and strengths and attributes to who to the mercy of the lord that it came all from the lord so this is another very important consciousness aspect that as devotees we should harbor or or develop is that whatever we have as strengths is actually we are grateful to the lord that we have been given this skill level to be able to use it in his service so in the purport the confirmation of life after that is another very important principle because we read that the elephant remembered from his previous life now this is another notion or another another principle that baffles everyone including the scientists because they don't believe even einstein did not believe in reincarnation because they just cannot comprehend it so here we have the imagination and mythology and then we have another very important point about the principle of reincarnation because we can very clearly see that gajendra remembered his previous life and had piety however today they don't accept that principle but by not accepting something does it mean that that doesn't exist if i don't accept the covid-19 virus does that mean it does not exist hello we know it exists we cannot see it but it exists so similarly uh, by not accepting the principle of reincarnation of birth after death it doesn't mean it does not exist now archita prabhu was giving class on saturday and obviously there was the mention about the big bang theory you know mentioned in class now this is a classical example of imagination you want to know imagination at its best this is the imagination in fact today a lot of students when we are actually studying i'm a student so I, I, we also debate i know we have druta karma prabhu here we also debate and when we read these things and we are told believe this we also start questioning how is this this is the this is creative imagination that a bang bang theory happens and boom everything comes out perfect now you can see around us i'm sitting on a vyasasan we have a table we have a microphone 
Do you think this just came out of nowhere? It requires some intelligence. How minute it may be, it requires intelligence. We have Pat Prabhu flew here from Denver to come and install the sound system. Can you just imagine that just happened by him creating a bank theory? Correct Prabhu? You have to physically do it. Someone is there behind it. So imagine the very scientists who are telling us that we are doing mythology. They themselves are believing in imagination. What basis do they have to tell us that we are following mythology when we are following scripture? You see where I'm coming from? This is very important. This is very important for us to be able to understand why we are on the sound path. So, and that's why I gave an example of just a table. It needs a carpenter. Right now I'm doing a, I'm doing a bathroom. I know even to put a two by four, I need a person. It doesn't just come. You imagine all this creation perfectly aligned. All the universes floating. In fact, it says in science that if planet Earth was a bit closer or a bit further in its orbit, either it could be too hot to live on this planet or it could be too cold. The air, that oxygen is, heav is heavier than nitrogen and hydrogen so we can breathe it and not the other way. Just imagine all this perfect arrangement, just a big bang and the perfect arrangement came. Is that possible, Sham Murari? It's not, Yes. Even to wear a mask, you have to physically do some endeavor, yes? So how did it just happen that the mask came? So we have to think. We have to also challenge the status quo. So, <clears throat> the problem stems from not accepting the peace formula. Bhaktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram. Surdam sarva bhutanam gyatva maam santim richati. So was Prabhu's one's one of the famous shlokas. This is the problem we have. Because a person in full consciousness of me, this is a translation, knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, supreme lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor of well and well-wisher of all living beings, living entities attains peace from the pangs of material miseries. We are not ready to give credit to who it belongs to. The United States of America claims on its currency in God we believe. But is that real? It, sorry, in God we trust. In God we trust. So trust means also to have a belief. It has to have faith. So Srila Prabhupada in his lectures states that the reason that one is entangled that Srila Prabhupada, I was listening, and I, I, I will tell you, you know, sometimes I am driving, like last week, I was driving in the middle of nowhere in pitch darkness. Because I left, I left the hotel at around 2 a.m. I had to catch, up, catch a morning flight, so I had to drive in pitch darkness. But in that pitch darkness, you can see how vulnerable you are. There is nothing. You're in the middle of the road, nothing. However, you listen to Srila Prabhupada. You feel that transcendental vibration going with you. Shravanam Kirtanam. And Srila Prabhupada actually was mentioning in his lecture that one's entanglement in material nature is the reason for our perpetual bondage. That we are in this perpetual bondage because of our, of our, it, our entanglement in material nature. The whole world is engaged in, sacrif in sacrificing energy for advancement of learning, social upliftment, economic development, and plans for improvement of the human condition. They are all just focused on the outer covering. No one even knows about the soul. No one understands the concept of the soul. We are just doing everything on the bodily platform. And that's why there is no peace in the world. And in today's purport, Ishopanishad is mentioned. We know that mantra one in Ishopanishad says, Ishavashyam idam sarvam yad kincha jagat, jagatyam jagat. That everything animate or inanimate that is within this universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. So that's where the peace formula comes. That's how we get 
peace within us. In the purport, the Lord also protects one who acknowledges the superiority of the Lord. That is also mentioned. And we know in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord boldly tells Arjun to declare the Kaunteya Pratijane Name Bhakta Pranasyanti. That boldly declare to the world that my devotee never perishes. And you can see that example. Now, what is also very befitting and something for us to also realize is that the Lord doesn't protect someone only in the human form of life. Look at what is happening. It is an elephant. But the Lord comes. Because the bodily concept does not exist in the realm of the Supreme Lord. We know this also from today that we are learning. This is also challenging our status quo that we are, we are thinking, oh, if I'm in the human form of the body, it's the only time maybe the Lord will come to protect me. No. In whatever yoni, in whatever form you have, the Lord gives you that ashray, gives you that protection. We can see that in today's example. So, whatever we see, now this is another very important point I got from Srila Prabhupada, listening to Srila Prabhupada, that whatever we see in the world today as creations, you know, we have very good creations. We have airplanes, we have hospitals, we have cars. All this is due to intelligence. There is no question about it. But this is due to us having the innate quality due, due to it being present in the Supreme Lord. Because this Lord has this quality, we have it. So the true perspective is that we should actually acknowledge and appreciate it as something given to us by the Lord and not be puffed up. So that's another very important point that I got that should be the mood of a devotee from listening to Srila Prabhupada. And then Towards the end, the emphasis is on the holy name. Kali Kala Nama Rupa Krishna Vatar. So, the power of the holy name is stressed. Now, this is a very important point. I know I'm, I'm just about to get into the time frame. But this is a very important point that we need to also remember that, the, that chanting of the holy name is not one of the activities of devotional service. It is the prime activity. It is not one of the activities. It is the prime activity. If we want to know that it's the prime activity, listen to the lecture given by Srila Prabhupada on November 7, 1970 in Bombay, where Srila Prabhupada touches on the Sikshastakama prayers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Srila Prabhupada says there that the subject of the prayers is Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam. That Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam. That all glories to the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra or Krishna Sankirtan movement. So all glories has been given to the chanting. And then we know when we say Cheto Darpana Marjanam, victory. So Srila Prabhupada said, what is this victory about that is being mentioned about Cheto Darpana Marjanam? It is that the dirty things accumulated in the heart due to material contamination are being washed away. That is our victory. Because it starts the process of us understanding we are not this body. So chanting is our prime activity. It is the conclusion of everything we do. And the chanting of the Hare Krishna is the beginning of spiritual life. Srila Prabhupada actually writes and states in that uh, lecture. He says, that as life in this material world has its beginning in material sound, similarly spiritual life has its beginning in the spiritual sound vibration of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Very important. So our sound vi spiritual sound vibration beginning starts with the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Uh, and then the last point was that, you know, Srila Prabhupada also mentioned something about literature. That, you know, today's literature is just disturbing the young minds. It is actually increasing the modes of passion and ignorance. And that's why I started with the, the shloka of Krishna Swat Dhamma Bhakate. Because this transcendental literature actually does the opposite. And with that I will end. If there is any questions, comments... Yes. Yes, Prabhu Ismail.
Thank you, Prabhu. In your last presentation or comment of the chanting of the Holy Name and quoting what Prabhupada mentioned in the Parambijaya Desi Krishna Sankirtanam, and also we heard this morning, Swavas was reading about the, uh, that in his temple should be established the chanting of the Holy Name 24 hours a day. And I was just wondering your opinion in that. What can you comment in that? Since you just mentioned that correct, this, this correct. is the primary thing, correct. and also, what's his name? Uh, Parikshi Maharaj is telling to uh, to uh, but to Sukadev Goswami. No, Sukadev is telling to, to Parikshi Maharaj. Maharaj. Yes. Tasman Sankirtanam Vishnu Jagan Mangalanam Hasan. That there's no. This is the most auspicious activity in the whole universe. Correct. You know, my understanding on today was on, on, on ourselves. You know, now we are speaking about congregational chanting. Am I correct, Prabhu? You are asking more on congregational chanting. And, you know, I, I, I'm speaking on behalf of temple authorities. I, I don't know if I'm speaking the right way. But the way I look at it is, we are doing that. But we are doing it not just in the temple. You know, right now we have COVID, but we go out for Harinam. You go out for book distribution. Is this not regarded as distributing the message of Hare Krishna? You're going out to do book distribution. We are going out to do Harinam. Uh, we are going out for congregational preaching. You know, we are doing the Zoom. Is this not all regarded as chanting the names of the Lord? Because at the end of the day, what are we doing? We are spreading the glories of the Holy Name. So we have limited resources. I let Swavas Prabhu add to it if I'm saying something. But it, we have limited resources. With limited resources, what can we do now? I know if you look at the example of, we can take example of Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupada. He could have stayed at Radha Damodar Mandir and continued chanting 24 hours. He was in the right atmosphere. There was already Harinam going there. But then he said, no, I need to go out. Now if we look at it, was he on the ship chanting Hare Krishna 24 hours? When he was sitting in the plane, was he chanting 24 hours? But where was his mood? What was he thinking? What was he doing? How was he engaging us? I, I, I hope I'm trying to explain it in, in a different perspective. What I'm trying to say is, we are meant to be doing that. Like for example, now we are doing work on the restaurant. Restaurant is a preaching model. If it's not done and we just continue chanting, how are we going to do the other activities? That, that's my two cents. I, I'm not an authority. Yeah, I like the observation you made. Yes. Because of lack of resources. We, limited that's, resources. That's, that's understandable. We have limited still, resources. Yeah, Yeah, but still, we, if we will have to equalize. And um, you know, that's, that's, that's why, you know, if, if there is someone wants to do it, they just have to ask the temple authorities that that's what we want to do. And I don't see why the temple authorities will not encourage. But there has to be continuation. And I'll give you a classic example. It's very challenging. Sunday program, even to get the same devotees to come and pack lunch, <laughs> is, is challenging. He knows himself. I had to send a text to Brigupati Prabhu when I was traveling. Brigupati Prabhu, we need help. You can't even get the continuation of service. So do you want to do it once or twice? The continuation is very important. I think that is where the focus is. So ask Prabhu, please okay. He set the example when they did the cleansing of Gundicha temple, everybody was chanting the holy name. So we can chant 24 hours. If you're in the kitchen cooking, chant Hare Krishna. If you're doing some service somewhere, chant. And if you have to do something else, you do. But then Prabhupada even said, you just chant Hare Krishna. But if you get hungry, you take a little prasad. And if you get tired, take a little snap. So, in, the, in, in between that, try to chant Hare Krishna. So, that, that's the perspective. Any more questions, comments? Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki? Yeah. Yeah.